So after building the saltwater potentiometer, this guy, I decided to try to build a relay. I've been using a lot of relays recently. These are solid state relays. We didn't actually get that far. We just got to a relay. Now, my first attempt was this. A bottle inside of a jar of water. One contact inside the bottle, one contact outside. It was supposed to be controlled by opening and closing this valve. But I found that the valve actually provided way too little conductivity. Nothing could get through hardly. It's too small. Electrochemical um, conduction actually requires space, and quite a bit of it appears. So I might get back to this and try to build one with a much larger valve, but that might be take more energy to control and might end up defeating the purpose. The next attempt was this little guy, and it's just an electromagnet pulling a wire up and down into the water. It's a homemade electromagnet pulling on a, an iron nail with a copper wire attached to it, so the efficiency was just, well, it was horrible, absolutely horrible. But it kind of sort of worked. And finally, the one that worked well enough to do a demo is this guy. Obviously, a speaker is the most efficient way to create movement with electricity that I know of, or at least with the parts available on hand. The wires are actually very thin wires and a bundle of them connected up. And then the one contact leads out and connects outside the speaker off. And the other contact goes directly into the water. And the wires are lowered or raised into the water. I got a switch here to turn on the power source to the, to the speaker. Now, these batteries could never operate this 12-volt fan on their own. What's going to operate the 12-volt fan is this DC power source under here. And it's going to run through the water, up through the, the pins uh, hanging above the water, and into there. But it will only flow when there is a closed circuit. So, plug in that power source, turn on our multimeter, get a reading. Okay, so we got some millivolts. We always get millivolts. Even air has millivolts. And this is a pretty close gap. The water is electrified and hanging just above it are electric, electric con uh, metal contacts. So there's quite a bit that can actually get through the, a small gap of air like that. And now we'll turn on the power, which will give this, pow this power source to the speaker. And as you can see, we have consistent voltage. Now, it says only 3 or 4 volts, but that's actually quite a bit more amps. Um, what's happening is you lose a lot of voltage when you use this system, uh, when you pass it through the water. It almost seems as if you lose your volts and they're converted into amps, but, and you do lose quite a few watts overall, but it seems like there seems to be some skewing towards losing your volts and gaining them, some of it back in amps. And we turn it off, and it stops spinning, and the voltage drops again and on, and off, and on, and off, and on, and off, and on, and off, and on, and off. And there you have it, a salt water relay.